Tashtalik, this is Tibet This Week, our weekly news on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Central Tibetan Administration. The headlines for this week. The ability to smile is something only humans can do, His Holiness the Dalai Lama said. President of the Central Tibetan Administration says, when Tibetan struggle succeeds, Gandhi succeeds, Ahimsa succeeds. President Dr. Lobsang Senge informs the young Tibetans on the benefits of adopting the middle way approach. The Central Tibetan Administration celebrates India's 73rd Independence Day. Representative of Office of Tibet Brussels meets with the Speaker of Flemish Parliament. The Central Tibetan Administration convenes the second 550 Youth Forum, shaping Tibet's future. His Holiness the Dalai Lama said the ability to smile is something only humans can do. During an interview with Hakka Television from Taiwan on Thursday morning, His Holiness was asked how he is able to keep smiling and whether His Holiness was the most optimistic of all the Dalai Lamas. His Holiness replied that smiling is a natural and special ability that only human beings have and recollected the advice of the 18th century Indian Buddhist master Shanti Deva, who he mentioned have said, if you are a true practitioner of Bodhicitta, you should smile at everyone you meet. On Tuesday this week, His Holiness the Dalai Lama began teaching eight verses for training the mind, the 37 practices of Bodhisattvas, and Nagarjuna's commentary on generating the awakening mind of Bodhicitta for thousands of attendees in the Indian town of Manali in Himachal Pradesh. His Holiness is continuing his teaching in the town and will confer our Loketeshwara empowerment tomorrow. <laughs> On his way from Dharamshala to Manali on Saturday last week, the former Chief Minister of the State, Professor Prem Kumar Dhumal, greeted His Holiness. Addressing the faculty members, students and staff of the Institute of Leadership and Governance, Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Vadodara in the Indian state of Gujarat last week, the President of the Central Tibetan Administration, Dr. Lobsang Senge, said that Tibetan freedom struggle practiced by the Central Tibetan Administration is a made-in-India movement that follows Gandhi's principles of Ahimsa. Assuring success of Tibetan struggles, President Dr. Senge is quoted saying, If we succeed, Gandhi succeeds, Ahimsa succeeds. So we follow nonviolence, Ahimsa. So if we succeed, Ahimsa succeeds, Gandhiji succeeds, another Gujarati succeeds. <laughs> if we don't succeed, Ahimsa doesn't succeed. Then who doesn't succeed? Yeah? I didn't say that, okay. <laughs> but we will succeed, don't worry about it. Maharaja Sayaji Rao University invited Dr. Senge as the chief guest at the diploma award ceremony of its Institute of Leadership and Governance. President Dr. Lobsang Senge highlighted the decade-long relationship between India and Tibet and briefed the audience on the current situation in Tibet. President Dr. Senge also interacted with the Tibetan students studying in the university. Vadodara Regional Tibetan Youth Congress organized the meeting. Dr. Senge appreciated the organization's 23 years of work for the cause of Tibet and reminded them the middle way approach as the only pragmatic strategy and policy to resolve the Tibet issue. He further elaborated on the benefits and advantages of adopting the middle way approach. The president advised the young students to face the challenges as it comes. While highlighting the hard work that the elder generations have put in, the president remarked that Tibetans have high potential. He then informed the students about the scholarships provided under the Department of Education and about 10 months course at Sara College for Higher Tibetan Studies for those who wish to be civil servants. The Central Tibetan Administration held a ceremony to commemorate India's 73rd Independence Day. 
President Dr. Lobsang Senge hoisted the Indian national flag and congratulated India on the occasion of its 73rd Indian Independence Day while expressing gratitude to the government and the people of India. Today is a very special day for India. Uh, India gained its independence 73 years ago and uh, so this is a very joyous occasion and uh, I would like to uh, wish the government and people of India a uh, very happy uh, occasion uh, as well as wish that the uh, India's economy grow and uh, bring welfare and benefits and employment to the general public uh, and uh, as Prime Minister Modiji's Achidin uh, definitely come uh, for this great uh, country because India has been the biggest supporter um, for the Tibetan people and his solemnness that I'm always says that he is uh, the son of India you know we all feel like that and we want to uh, express our profound gratitude to the government and people of India thank you on Wednesday this week, Representative Tashi Pinzok of Office of Tibet Brussels and his colleagues met with Wilfred Wandale, the President of Flemish Parliament. During the meeting, Representative Tashi Pinzok recalled the close and long association of Tibetan people with Flemish Parliament. He also brought to his attention the great admiration that His Holiness the Dalai Lama holds for the European Union. He outlined numerous occasions, including the meetings and events attended by His Holiness the Dalai Lama in the European Parliament. Mr. Wandale reciprocated his sincerity about his and his party's support for Tibet. A group of young Tibetans from different countries are meeting in Dharamshala to discuss the Central Tibetan Administration's 550 vision. The second 550 Youth Forum that began this afternoon with its inaugural ceremony will be held for four days. The forum will witness plenary sessions on Tibet and People's Republic of China, establishing constructive engagement and negotiations, inclusion of and responsiveness to Tibetans inside Tibet and diaspora, young voices in the Tibetan freedom movement, communications advocacy and international relations, Central Tibetan Administration's leadership towards the 550 vision, creating visionary leadership and resource mobilization. The 550 vision calls for resolving the issue of Tibet and Tibet's political future in the next five years in accordance with the middle way approach. The participants are a select group of 100 young Tibetans of age group 20 to 35 from 13 different countries. That is all for today. See you in the next edition of Tibet This Week.